Have you ever thought about what null actually means? In managed languages such as C-sharp or Java, if you try and use an object that's null, you'll get a null reference or a null pointer exception. That's because those languages specifically hold your hand. But what about C++? That's what we're gonna look into here today. But first, what is the value of null? Well, over here I have some C++ code. Let's go ahead and type in void pointer value and we'll set it equal to null pointer. Now there's no null keyword in C++. Instead, we use something called null pointer. If we set a breakpoint on this line over here, I'll make sure my configuration is debug and I'll hit F5. We'll hit this breakpoint and if we hover over a value, we'll see 0x and then a whole bunch of zeros. Let's look at this value specifically in memory though. I'm gonna go to debug windows memory and then memory one. And then what I'll do is I'll just type in ampersand value and hit enter. This will take me to the memory address of this actual variable. So we have a void pointer variable stored on the stack and this is its address. And if we look at the value at that address, we see eight of these groups of zeros. That's eight bytes and they're all set to zero. Why eight bytes? Because I've built in a 64-bit architecture and a void pointer or any pointer, any memory address is going to be eight bytes. Okay, so that's your answer. Null pointer is equal to zero. It's stored as zero in memory. Now there is one other keyword you may have seen in C++ for null. It's actually not a keyword, but rather a macro. And it's null with capital letters. Now this is mostly used in C. However, it's totally acceptable to use it in C++ as well. Just might not be stylistically appropriate. If we actually go to the definition of this macro, you'll see there's kind of two definitions here. If C++ is defined, it's just zero. Otherwise, in C, case, it would be zero, but explicitly cast to a void pointer. No real difference here. The point is null is defined as zero. So we can just substitute this with zero. If we want, it's the same effect. It just makes your code look a little bit different. And strictly speaking, probably isn't recommended because it adds a little bit extra complexity, I guess. I mean, we like writing our code in English, don't we? So null probably makes more sense than having a pointer set to zero. And it's also perfectly valid valid to set any integer really to null because remember null is just zero and this works so why wouldn't that work especially if it is actually defined to this zero and not to avoid pointer zero because that will cause problems so is null really all that scary i mean it's just an it's just an integer defined to zero like a number defined to zero why is zero so scary and why can it crash my program the problem here comes down to pointers pointers are just memory addresses and zero is not a valid memory address so what happens is you will get something called an access violation if you try and read memory that is not valid. And it's not really the memory specifically that's not valid, it's just what memory address the operating system determines is not valid. So if you're trying to specifically read a memory address that does not exist or does not contain memory that you're allowed to access. A good kind of real world analogy to this is if you type in an address into Google Maps that just physically does not exist. Like you're just not, you, you can't go there. So how does all of this work with objects? Well, let's create a class here called entity. I'm just gonna give it a default constructor and two private variables, maybe a parent entity and a name. Now, because I wanna access the name, I'm also going to go ahead and add a getter for that. So const std string reference get name const return m name. And I'm also gonna write one more function here called print type, which is just gonna print the type of the class, which is just entity. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in std cout entity. Okay, so I have an entity class with a couple of member variables and a couple of functions. Cool. So how would I create this class in C++? Well, if we want to strictly kind of compare this to managed languages like C Sharp and Java, you'd have to create it on the heap. So we can type in entity, entity equals new entity. This is equivalent to the kind of C Sharp or Java way of creating this, which would be like that. Of course, this is C++, so it would actually be preferable to try and create it on the stack unless you specifically need it to be on the heap. However, we'll just ignore that for now, especially because we're talking about null. So what happens if we just don't set a value for it? So if I just type in entity pointer entity like this, what's gonna happen? Well, if I try and use something like get name and I want to print that out, if I run this program, I'm actually not even going to be able to run this program. I'm gonna get a build error and it's gonna tell me that I'm trying to use an uninitialized local variable entity. 
And so what I need to do is explicitly set a value to it. So let's go ahead and just set it to something like null pointer, hit F5 and we'll see what happens. Okay, we get a read access violation. This was eight. Now, why does it say this was eight? We'll get back to that. If we look at our call stack and we go back to the main function, I'll close this memory view. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see that this line of code that crashed entity is null. So even though the actual kind of crash we got is somewhere inside like std string, if we go back to our code, you can see that the reason this crashed in the first place was because this was null. That's a really important thing to remember when you're debugging this. If you have access violations, go back to your code and see what it is you're trying to access and what the value actually is. If we try and run this in the release configuration, we'll get something slightly different. It's gonna tell us that we have an access violation reading location 20 over here. And you can see in this case, the debugger actually breaks right on this line. That's because it's optimized a few things and get name probably doesn't even exist anymore. But the point is we're gonna get crashes. They're gonna be either access violation or read access violation. Debug gives us a little bit more information, tells us what the value of this is. But overall, we know that it's not working. In managed languages, this would be much easier to debug because it would just tell us that entity is null. Whereas in C++, depending on your compiler, depending on a few other things, it's a little bit more cryptic usually. Okay, so we've determined that get name on entity, which is a null pointer, clearly doesn't work because you can't call a function on a null pointer. That doesn't really make sense, does it? Now we do have one other function, print type. So what do you think happens if we call that? If I just call entity print type and entity is null, What's going to happen? Now, while you think about it, let me tell you about Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. If you haven't heard of Brilliant before, you're seriously missing out. Brilliant is an amazing website filled with many, many courses on various STEM topics. Math and computer science go together really, really well. And Brilliant have a lot of really high quality courses on both of those topics. Whether you're just starting to realize the importance of math and want to get started with something easy, or you're trying to learn some more advanced math, perhaps for 3D graphics, Brilliant have got you covered. It. And if it's specifically computer science you're interested in, maybe you want to learn more about neural networks, they are one of the best places to check out for that because all of their courses are extremely interactive and engaging. They have these beautiful widgets that you can play with to make sure that you visually understand what's going on. And they'll also continually quiz you to make sure that you're actually learning and retaining the information. And guess what? You can get started for free. Just go to brilliant.org slash the channel, check it out for yourself, just scroll through their courses, see if you find something that you like. It's free. There's no reason not to do it. And if you do find a bunch of courses that you like and want to spend more time on the platform, Brilliant have been nice enough to offer the first 200 of my subscribers 20% off an annual membership. Huge thank you as always to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Okay, well, entity print type, it's null. Let's go ahead and run this code. I'm gonna stop it right here though. I'll hit F5 and whoop. Well, I don't see any access violation. Let's take a look at our console and check this out. It printed entity. So it did exactly what the function said. And if I just hit F10, okay, now I get an access violation. So what seems to be happening is if I just comment out this line for a minute, I'll remove all my breakpoints, I'll hit F5, my program runs successfully. Unlike in managed languages where you would get a null pointer or a null reference exception. So how come this works, but this doesn't work. And does this even make sense that this works? I mean, this is this object is null. So what is it calling print type on? That doesn't make any sense. Well, let's scroll up a little bit and talk about how methods actually work. These are functions within a class. They're not static functions or anything like that. They're member functions. We usually call them methods in object-oriented programming. I usually just call them functions or member functions though, between you and me. So when the compiler is compiling this program and it's looking at this class, what actually happens to this class? How do these classes work? Well, if you actually think back to C, then there's no such thing as a class. There is a struct, which is kind of the same thing. However, structs cannot have functions inside them. So let's talk about how we would go about rewriting this class in C. Well, we'd go down here, we'd create a struct called entity. I'm gonna call it entity data just so that it's a different name. I'm gonna copy these two members. So we can have a structure of different variables. That's fine. I'll just change this to be entity data. So we're pointing to our same type here. And then how would we get these functions to work? Well, we just write them outside of the class, right? So 
I'll copy them over here. I'll get rid of this const and maybe I'll just add a little leading entity over here just so that we know that it's kind of supposed to be a, a function of this particular class even though it's just a free floating function, of course. Okay, cool. Well, the first problem is we have to return name, but name is obviously relative to a particular instance of this struct. So what do we do? Well, we need to actually take in that struct as a parameter. This is exactly what happens in C++ when we actually compile this class. The methods inside the class, the functions inside the class get converted into just regular free floating functions that actually take in an instance of the class as their first parameter. And guess what that instance is called? This. Now in this case, we can't name it this because that's a reserved keyword. So let's just go ahead and name it self. And then mname obviously comes from self. So now this makes sense because mname is coming from this particular instance. We actually now have a way to get that specific data we want to return. Now one minor addition here, the original function was actually labeled as const which means that the self that gets taken in here, the this pointer that gets taken in, is actually a const pointer like this. And with print type, the exact same thing happens. Now print type is not marked as const. So what would happen is we take in this, obviously, but it's not going to be const. And just for example's sake, if print type had been a static function like this, then it just wouldn't take in the instance. That's why you can never access a member such as mParent or something like that from within a static function. You can't do that because a non-static member reference must be relative to a specific object. And if we don't take in a specific object in the first place, then of course we can't possibly access the data unless it is also static, because in that case, it knows where the data lives. So back to our normal example. So what happens if we try and call get name, but entity is null. Well, it means that the self that is passed in here is null. And what are we trying to do? We're trying to specifically access a string from null, right? This is zero. We're trying to access its name and return it as an actual string reference, which means that we're going to read that memory address, a memory address that is invalid, and thus we crash. Now let's scroll down to this function. Do you see the difference here? Okay, we also call entity print type. Entity is in fact null pointer, so self is null. But then, like, well, what do we do here? We just print out the word entity followed by a new line. Do we access self at all? No, we don't. We don't care about self at all. This may as well be like a static function because we don't even use self or the this pointer. So that is why this doesn't crash because it's not the fact that you're actually calling a function on null. That's perfectly valid because remember, it's not like this function exists within the actual entity class. It's not physically existing inside here. It gets compiled out into something like this by the compiler. It's just a normal function. Inside our compiled binary, there's just a bunch of CPU instructions. There's just a bunch of machine code at a particular address inside that binary that gets loaded up into memory. And the instruction pointer will simply jump to that address and start executing instructions. It's not like it magically lives inside that object. And if the object is null, it's not going to work. So the thing that causes the crash is the fact that we're actually trying to use these member variables and they can't be accessed because the object itself, the instance is null. And to further demonstrate this case, let's talk about a little something. Let's talk about a macro called offset of. Now offset of is a pretty cool macro. What it will do is it lets you pass in the name of a class such as entity. I might just use entity data here, but it's the same thing. And then the name of a member variable such as M name. And what it will do is it will actually give you the offset of that particular member in memory. So if I bring this code down over here, offset of M name, and we print that offset, let's hit F5. You can see the offset of M name is eight. So we can use this macro to actually tell us what the offset of this is in memory. Why is it eight? Because this because this M parent variable is obviously the very first thing in the struct. So it's going to be at an offset of zero. And then what is its size? Well, it's a pointer on a 64 bit architecture. So it's going to be eight bytes, which puts M name at an offset of eight, meaning the first zero through seven inclusive bytes are occupied by this variable. And then the next however many bytes a string takes from byte eight onwards, is occupied by this variable. But how does offset of 
know that? How exactly does it work? Well, if we actually go to the definition of it, there's a couple different definitions depending on, again, whether or not this C++ macro is defined, but both of them will technically work in C++. We're gonna look at the bottom one just because it's a little bit more concise. You can see what it's doing and it's pretty simple. We take in two variables here, S and M. Now S is entity data and M is M name. So this is entity data. What we're doing is we're basically casting zero to be an entity data pointer, then we're going to that member variable, getting the memory address of it and casting that to a size T. So if we were to write this ourselves, then offset would be equal to entity data pointer zero, right? So this is step one. So this is a null pointer and you can actually use null pointer if you want, it's the same thing. And relative to that null pointer, we're actually looking up that specific member variable, the specific member variable that caused a crash earlier. But how come this is working? Well, the crucial difference is that we're not actually looking at the value of it. We're not trying to read the memory at this address because that would be a read access violation. What we're doing is we're actually getting the memory address of that variable. So in other words, where is this located in memory? And since it's relative to zero, then that gives us the offset. If it was relative to an actual entity data allocation, so if we actually created a new entity data here, and then we tried to look at name, of course that would be relative to whatever address this actually gets allocated at. But since we are specifically looking at it from this kind of zero pointer, it means that this will in fact just be the offset. And then the final step is to cast this, which is going to be a string pointer because mname is a string. We can just cast that to something like a UN64T or a size T as the macro was doing. And that gives us our offset. And if we try and run this program, we will of course get the exact same result. And if we try and run it with null pointer, then of course we'll also get the same result. And if we actually take this breakpoint away so that it tries to run this invalid code as we did earlier in the video, and it said that this was eight, you can now see what the problem is. That string is located at an offset of eight bytes. So the value that it gets is eight and it tries to read from that specific value and that of course is wrong. So again, it's not the fact that this specific self is null here when it tries to actually return the name. It's the fact that we're then trying to print it, which means it has to access the string, which means when it asks the string for its address, it is going to be at an offset of eight to entity and entity is null. So zero plus eight gives us eight and we get a little message and we get a little message telling us that this was eight, which is a read access violation. We can't read from that memory address because that's not valid memory. And that is what null is. Hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, please don't forget to hit the like button below. If you have other suggestions for C++ videos, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to check out brilliant.org slash the channel and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.